There being none, we will move on. The Senate will now proceed to the consideration of a condolence motion relating to former President of the Senate, the Hon. Michael Eamon Bean, AM. I call the acting leader of the government in the Senate, Senator Cash. Thank you, Mr. President. And I seek leave to move a motion relating to former President of the Senate, Michael Bean. There being no objection, leave is granted. Senator Cash. Thank you. And I move that the Senate expresses its regret at the death on the 30th of January 2022 of the Honourable Michael Eamon Bean, AM, former President of the Senate and former Senator for Western Australia, places on record its gratitude for his service to the parliament and the nation and tenders its sympathy to his family in their bereavement. Thank you, Senator Cash. Is anyone seeking the call? Senator Cash. Thank you. Mr President, we pause today to commemorate the life of the Honourable Michael Bean AM, former President of the Senate and Senator for Western Australia. Michael was a proud Western Australian, an intelligent and accomplished parliamentarian, and a true Labor statesman, committed to the finest traditions of the Senate and to public service. Michael Eamon Bean was born in London in 1937 to Father Francis and Mother Grace. He won a scholarship to the Salzian College in Battersea, where he completed his schooling and worked briefly as an insurance clerk before migrating with his family to Australia at the age of 17. That was in 1954, and Michael soon commenced work as a process worker at the Australian Electrical Company in Perth. Completing an apprenticeship as an electrical fitter, Michael went on to work as an electrician for some 10 years, including for his own small business as a contractor. During this time, Michael also undertook three months of compulsory military service, serving with the 13th Field Squadron of the Royal Australian Engineers. It was not long before Michael returned to further his education, undertaking study at the Leadable Technical College and subsequently at the Claremont Teachers College and the University of Western Australia. He attained a Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Education and Diploma of Education. His education served him well, and he went on to teach and lecture across economic psychology and education, but not before marrying Jenny Aitken, with whom he had two children. Michael became active in the teachers' union, joined the ALP in 1968, becoming president of the Bunbury branch of the party from 1969 to 1972. A move to Melbourne in 1974 saw Michael engaged as part of a three-person team to set up the Trade Union Training Authority. He served as the authority's WA director, which in turn would provide Michael exposure to the Labor Party at a national level during his six years at the helm. Michael won the ballot for the position of WA State Secretary of the ALP, becoming a member of the national executive of the party from 1981 until 1992. He also became a national vice president of the party from 1986 to 1989, as well as serving as a regular national conference delegate for Western Australia throughout the 1980s and the 1990s. Those familiar with this period of history in Western Australia would recognise that Michael Behan played a pivotal role in the 1986 state election as well as the federal Labor election campaigns of 1983, 1984 and 1987, when, of course, Michael himself entered the Senate to serve under Prime Ministers Bob Hawke and Paul Keating. Upon his election to the parliament, Michael brought with him 50 years of lived experience traversing trade, education, civic service and party leadership. This was all complemented, of course, by the perspective of having been a first-generation immigrant to this great nation, having spent the first 17 years of his life in England, before embarking, like so many post-war migrants of his generation, in search of a better life 
in Australia. It was perhaps this broad and extensive life experience that helped Michael perfect his craft in this place. He brought an enthusiasm with him to the Senate, undertaking to advance the ideals for which he proudly stood. In the Senate, it was clear Michael did not simply wish to be a representative who spoke to fill the silence, but opted to speak if his words added to the debate. As a backbencher senator, Michael delivered powerful contributions on industrial relations, as well as speaking on issues on education, the economy and electoral matters. To the latter, Michael served diligently on the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters from 1987 to 1994. On the 1st of February 1994, Michael was elected unopposed as president of the Senate, a position he would hold until his departure from the parliament in 1996. During his time in the Senate, Michael thought deeply, not only of the political ephemera of the day, but upon the enduring role of the institution of the Senate in Australia's democracy. In his final address to this chamber, Michael reflected on how his views of the importance and purpose of this place had transformed throughout his parliamentary career. As Michael described it, he had initially held a fairly sceptical and dismissive view of this place when he was first elected in 1987, describing himself as no enthusiastic supporter of the very chamber over which he would eventually preside as president. This scepticism, however, stands in some contrast to the reflections Michael delivered in his valedictory remarks nine years later, in which he surmised, I do have greater respect for it as an increasingly effective and necessary check on the power of the executive, any executive. I believe the Senate is developing and refining its role as a house of review and that while petty politics frequently distract it from an effective use of its powers, much useful work is done in scrutinising and critically appraising the decisions and activities of government. It is a rare but worthwhile exercise for senators to routinely challenge ourselves on what the Senate means to each of us. During his time as president, Michael also led a number of delegations overseas and effectually used the position to provide access for Australian officials to high levels of government overseas. Michael was a deep thinking man who polished his craft as a parliamentarian and deftly performed his duties as president to raise the decorum of this place and the standing of Australian governments on the world stage. Following his departure from the Senate in 1996, Michael married Margaret, quite literally the day after he left the Senate. He went on to be elected as director of the Pharmacy Guild of Australia, representing the interests of independent community pharmacists to government and other community and private organisations. In this role, Michael advocated for the expansion of pharmacy businesses to encompass the provision of health advice and health-related services. He continued to serve his community as a member of the board of a local community centre, as chairman of a research and advocacy group, and chairman of an advisory committee managed by Monash University. In 2011, Michael was appointed a member of the Order of Australia for his service to the Parliament of Australia, particularly as a senator for Western Australia, and for his service to the promotion of international bipartisan political debate to the pharmacy profession and to the community. We can all draw strength and encouragement from Michael's diverse and significant contributions to public life and his posture towards the challenges of our time. On behalf of the government and the Australian Senate, I extend our sincerest condolences to Michael's family. Senator Keneally. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I rise on behalf of the opposition to express our condolences 
Following the passing of a labor comrade, the Honorable Michael Amon Bean, AM, former president of the Senate, at age 85. As I begin, I wish to convey the opposition's condolences to his family and friends. And I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the uh, acting leader of the government, Senator Cash, uh, for her contributions today. I thank the Bean family the on as well and the Honourable Gary Gray, AO, Australian Ambassador to Ireland and personal friend of Michael, and members of the Western Australian branch of the Australian Labour Party, particularly John Cattle and Mar Marcel Anderson, for their thoughtful consideration, advice and anecdotes about former Senator Bean. Eleven years ago, the Australian people recognised the contribution of Michael Bean by admitting him as a member of the Order of Australia for service to the Parliament of Australia, particularly as a Senator for Western Australia, to the promotion of international bipartisan political debate, to the pharmacy profession and to the community. At his funeral in Melbourne on Tuesday 7 February 2022, former Senator Bean was described as a genuinely good and kind man. For a kid who played and swam at Collimore Harbour and attended Loretto Abbey School in Dockley, Dockley he would rise to great heights. His career was varied. He was an electrician, a teacher, a union leader, and a secretary of the Australian Labor Party in the state of Western Australia. In 1987, he became a senator for that state, which culminated in his role as president of this chamber until he left politics in 1996. Former Senator Bann was a true Labor man and a great Irish Western Australian. And through all of this, he remained good, gentle, and kind. Michael Bean was born in London in 1937, and his early years were not easy. The impact of the Great Depression was still being felt. Then the Second World War came, with constant bombings, including of his family home. As a consequence, the family decided to move to Ireland. Former Senator Bean often spoke of his teenage years as a time of joy. He immersed himself in Irish culture, and he became a true lover of his father's native country, especially of Yeats' poetry and Joyce's prose. In his adult life, he returned to Ireland often. When the Bean family decided to migrate from Ireland to Australia, former Senator Bean was 17 years old, and it was time for him to think of the future. In 1954, after disembarking a migrant ship at Fremantle, he found work at the Australian Electric Company in Perth, manufacturing electrical equipment. And following his apprenticeship as an electrician and his introduction to trade unionism, he became increasingly interested and concerned about workers' rights and workplace safety and was determined to do something about it. In his 20s, he decided to return to formal education. He first attained an arts and education degrees from the University of Western Australia and became a secondary school teacher in the regional town of Bunbury in Western Australia. It was this combination of factory floor background, trade qualification, union membership and teaching that led Mr. Bean to becoming the first ever education officer of the Trades and Labour Council of Western Australia. This initiative underpinned the establishment in 1975 of the Australian Trade Union Training Authority, known as TUTA, funded by the Whitlam government to provide education and training programs for union officials. Tudor was a project of Labor Minister Clyde Cameron, and former Senator Bean was a devotee of its mission. It not only sought to educate union officials on the basics of organizing and representing workers, but greatly improved the training of officials by including courses on governance and running a business. In addition, its emphasis on extending professionalism extended to appearance, style, and language. It was the importance of image and presentation that former Senator Bean carried into his later role as a party official preparing candidates for election. And former Senator Bean was instrumental in guiding the establishment of TUTA as a statutory authority in every state and territory and became its first director in Western Australia. And it was through TUTA that he also learned the importance of training and organization to keep unions relevant in an ever-changing world. He was also attuned to the need for political action to ensure the rights and well-being of working men and women were protected. Now, Michael Bean's move to the political wing of the labor movement occurred in 1981 when he became the General Secretary of the Western Australian branch of the ALP. This was a significant time, as Senator Cash notes, to be involved as a party official as success occurred at a state and federal level. 
Former Senator Bean led Labor's successful election campaign to win government at the state level in February 1983. And a few weeks later, Labor won the March 1983 federal election, installing Bob Hawke as Prime Minister. Former Senator Bean would go on to oversee Labor's successful state re-election campaign in WA in 1986, as well as the local contribution to further federal success in 1984 and 1987. These elections saw Labor in Western Australia address the lack of women in state and federal parliaments, with a record number of women from Western Australia elected at both state and federal levels. I'd like to think that Mr. Bean would be a little bit delighted that two female senators were leading his condolence today. And while Michael Bean was a champion of women be elected, being elected to parliament, and his record reflects this, he was not a supporter of affirmative action or quotas, an issue at which he was at odds with his party. Michael's enduring political legacy during his time as party secretary was the modernization of Labor's political campaigning infrastructure, practice and culture in Western Australia. He brought a greater professionalism to campaigns, seeing the value in modernizing local and regional organizational structures and training campaign workers. His vision was to ensure that those who followed him would be best placed to steward his party forward. He adopted new ideas and technology from overseas, and he created a culture of campaign innovation, which deployed political imagery and themes, communicated with new tactics and methods. In the 1980s, these ideas were new and novel, and those who worked alongside him at all, time became, all, the, all the time became used to his organizational motto of crisp, concise, and contemporary. This became the campaigning hallmark of New Labour under Tony Blair in Britain, but its origin was very much in former Senator Bean's thinking 40 years ago. He further introduced wage equality for political workers and party staff, becoming the first to champion pension payments and equality of reward and opportunity for female staff. And the party adopted his approach to campaigning and organization nationally. And by 1993, Bean was the chairman of the Australian Labor Party's National Campaign Committee. And that year, under Paul Keating, Labor won a federal election victory many had dismissed as impossible, the victory for the true believers. Michael Bean won election to the Senate as the Senator for Western Australia at the simultaneous dissolution of 1987 and was re-elected in 1990. His principal participation in parliamentary proceedings focused on those areas with which he had the deepest affinity, industrial relations, working conditions, education, the economy, and electoral matters. And his contributions to committees were significant. Perhaps unusually for a senator, this included pivotal roles on two joint committees, often maligned by believers in the Senate's institutional independence. By contrast, he saw them as beneficial as a result of their breadth of representation and broad perspective. He served on the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters from 1987 to 1994, bringing his expertise as a party official to the fore. He argued in support of measures such as the total ban on broadcasting of paid political party advertisements and the full disclosure of political donations as, quote, vital to the integrity of the political process. He also served as the founding chair of the Joint Standing Committee on Corporations and Securities from 1991 to 1994. This committee had significant oversight of the Australian Securities Commission, the predecessor of ASIC, but it also operated in a vastly different corporate law environment compared to what we know today. It's easy to forget in the 1990s were a highly significant time in the evolution of this area of law in Australia, and Michael Bean was one who pushed for a thorough redrafting of the corporation's law. The states and the Commonwealth have been attempting to find ways to create uniform corporations law since the Second World War. They were rebuffed by practical limitations, technical defects, and the High Court, which found the Constitution limited the capacity of the Commonwealth to legislate, and saw, so the law remained the domain of the states. Finally, the impetus for reform reached a stage where the input and the hard work of many, including parliamentarians like former Senator Bean, gave birth to the Corporations Act 2001, which remains the overarching law governing companies in our nation today. Former Senator Bean was also adept at internal labor politics. He helped to found, found the center faction, focused on policy, neither right nor left politics, genuinely looking to balance the party. 
and the Senate faction played a critical role in the success and stability of the Hawke and then the Keating governments and their reforms, which started 30 years of continuous economic growth. Now, Michael Bean, having been leader of the federal parliamentary, having been a leader in the federal parliamentary Labor Party, became the 19th president of the Australian Senate on 1 February 1994, succeeding Kerry Sibra. As the Senate's presiding officer, he improved the actual working of this chamber, and his reforms continue to today. It was during his Senate presidency that changes to the committee system came into effect that sought to make committee membership and chairing arrangements more closely to reflect the party representations in the Senate. This was the beginning of the legislative and general purpose standing committee system, incorporating the examination of estimates that we recognize as still being in operation almost continuously since that time. Michael Behan might be described as something of a convert. Like many of his generation, he was skeptical of the role of the Senate due to its role in precipitating the 1975 constitutional crisis. But he came to recognize its essential role as a check on the power of the executive, as he said, on any executive. He particularly enjoyed the challenge of administering the parliamentary departments and working with the parliament's highly skilled and varied staff. Former Senator Behan was acknowledged by Gareth Evans, a fellow Labor senator and one of Australia's most significant foreign ministers, for his personal warmth, charm, and is an outstanding character who contributed to the opportunity, wealth, and humanity of Australia. The role of the President of the Senate enabled him to become a global ambassador for Australia, something he'd not previously contemplated, despite his active work as a member of both the Senate and Joint Standing Committees on Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade, with a particular interest in trade and human rights. He became the Australian Labor Party's international secretary too, and that allowed him to ca train campaign workers for social democratic parties all over the world, including Malta, South Africa, Vietnam, and Fiji. In Malta, he campaigned for the election of George Veya. It was clearly a successful campaign. Veya went on to become deputy prime minister, minister for foreign affairs, and in 2019, president of Malta. It's worth noting that in recent days, the Labor Party in Malta just won its third consecutive term in office. And here in Australia, Michael Behan's legacy lives on in Malta. In South Africa, he campaigned during the first post-apartheid elections, supporting the election of President Nelson Mandela. And this role also provided some unusual opportunities. In 1995, the General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam visited Australia to coincide with the accession of Vietnam as the seventh member of ASEAN. This was the highest ranking Vietnamese figure to visit Australia to date. Prime Minister Paul Keating hosted a reception at the Lodge, and the General Secretary from Vietnam expressed a desire to meet his counterpart in the Australian Labor Party. The then National Secretary of the ALP was 37-year-old Gary Gray. He was concerned that he might not fit the profile of what a general secretary from Vietnam might expect in his counterpart, and so Gary sent Michael Behan in his place. It's understood that Michael was well-received, and Australian-Vietnam relations today remain strong. Michael Behan's parliamentary career was cut short. Uh, when he uh, did not uh, win re-election in the March 1996 campaign. The constitutional architecture, however, that governs the Senate placed him in an unusual position of continuing to serve as the President of the Senate even after his term ended on the 30th of June 1996. And he remained in office until the Senate met in August to choose Margaret Reed, the Senate's first and to date only, female president as his successor. Following the conclusion of his political career, former Senator Behan settled into Melbourne and devoted much of his time to the community. His endeavors included fighting for housing projects for, and for democracy and for an Australian republic. And I know from our colleague in the other place, the member for Wills, Mr. Peter Khalil, who was former Senator Behan's local member, just how valued he was in the community. He also acted as a government relations and strategic policy consultant for the Pharmacy Guild of Australia. And the Rudd Labor government asked him to chair a review of political governance aid between 2008 and 2009. 
As in all his life, he dedicated his energy for good causes, even writing a letter to the editor of the Age newspaper in Melbourne just a few weeks before his death in January, making arguments for Republican presidential models. Michael Behan lived a real labour life, committed to community and committed to causes. He was the epitome of politeness, a popular identity in the Senate, and someone who always worked in support of the team. From London to Dockley, from Perth and to eventually to our national capital, he remained a good, gentle, kind and decent man. He was also someone you could trust. He would straight up tell you if he was not going to back you and would not hold it against you if you were not going to back him. He will be greatly missed. Michael is survived by his wife, Margaret, his brothers, Terry, Peter and Frank, by his first wife, Jenny, and his children, Daniel and Kate. The opposition again expresses our condolences following the passing of Michael Behan, and we again convey our sympathies to his family and to his friends. Call the Deputy President, Senator Lyons. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise on behalf of uh, WA, the WA branch um, to put on the record uh, my contributions to the condolence motion to former Senator and President of the Senate, Michael Behan, and I wish to associate my comments with those of uh, Senator Keneally and Senator Cash. I knew Michael uh, really as a party member and someone who was active in the party. Um, and I, I knew obviously he was a senator, but my, most of my association was in uh, work with him as, um, as a member of the party and an active member of the WA Administrative Committee and the, the National Administrative Committee. So Michael joined the party, as we've heard, in 1968 and was active in the Bunbury branch. And he took that branch from a fairly moribund branch to an active branch. And I'm pleased to say he really uh, worked to increase the membership and revitalise the sorts of activities members got involved in. And I'm pleased to say that that activism of the Bunbury branch continues today under the stewardship of um, Don Punch, the local Labor member down there, and I've certainly met with the branch on, on many occasions, and uh, they are still an active branch, and I think they would be pleased to know the history of that branch as being um, revitalised by uh, Michael Behan. Michael, as we heard, has had retrained re as a teacher. He became an educator and he first worked with the WA Trades and Labor Council, now known as Unions WA, as a trainer. And he was a part of a three-person committee that established the Trade Union Training Authority, which um, was an amazing um, establishment. And I'm sure Senator Urquhart, like me, uh, as a union official, I attended courses um, at Tudor in Audbury, Wodonga, and certainly Michael Behan was a part of um, the, the group, the small group that established the Trade Union Training Authority. And I'm sure there's other people in this place, apart from Senator Urquhart and myself, and in the other place who also attended Tudor. And it was a very sad occasion um, when it was you know, uh, defunded and and, and became lost to the trade union movement. Um, so in about 1981, as we've heard, Michael became the secretary of the WA Labor Party, and it was in this role that I uh, certainly got to know him more closely and in his role on the national executive. Um, certainly, Michael was pivotal in Labor winning the state elections, as we've heard, in 1983 and 1986. And it was probably in 1986 that I got to know Michael. Um, and of course, that followed with the federal campaigns that we won from WA in 83, 84, and 87. Now, as history shows, and I believe Senator Cash and Senator Keneally have remarked, but I lived through these times. These were heady days for the Australian Labor Party, very heady days uh, indeed, and some that those opposite uh, like to refer back to and try and still uh, tarnish us with uh, in this modern day of politics. Um, but uh, they, were, they were heady days 
for the Australian Labor Party. And I have to say, in all of the time that I knew Michael, he was very gentle. I don't think I, I cannot recall a time that I ever saw him raise his voice or indeed lose his temper. He was a, a very calm influence and a very good secretary to have, have at the helm uh, of the Labor Party during those years. Um, as we've heard, in 1987, Michael was elected to the Senate, and um, during his time in the Senate, he continued to pursue his passions on industrial relations reform, working conditions, education, the economy and electoral matters. Michael was also passionate about peace, something he and I shared, although we were from different arms of the party. Um, we, could, um, we certainly had a peace activism and nuclear disarmament as something that we shared together, and of course he was also passionate about native title. Um, in 1994, Michael was elected president of the Senate, and I must say it's with great pride that as I walk backwards and forwards to my office each day that I often look at that um, portrait of Michael, and uh, it is the Michael Bean I remember and recall. He doesn't, didn't look any different in that to the Michael Bean that I, um, that I recalled. Um, so he uh, continued on in that role and, as we've heard, he made great reforms um, to the Senate in the role of president. Indeed, even though he was somewhat cynical when he was first elected to the Senate, he became a great supporter. As we all do in this place, we are all fiercely proud of the roles that we play as senators in this place. Um, the WA Party, through its current uh, secretary, Tim Picton, and the assistant Se secretary, Ellie, Ellie Whitaker, wanted me to put their remarks um, on the Senate as well. Um, so they extend uh, our deepest sympathy to the family and to, indeed, the friends of Michael Behan. And Michael, as we know, was a stalwart of the Labor Party, whose ongoing contributions um, continue to mean so much to us all. And um, WA Labor extends its condolences and sincere appreciation for the impact that Michael Behan made to our party and to Australia. Vale, Michael Behan. I will just add a few uh, short remarks, and I also wish to uh, give my sincere condolences to the family of Michael Bean. Uh, Michael Bean was the fourth West Australian president of the Senate, but the first at that point for 50 years. So it was a long time uh, between innings. Uh, his career as an electrician, uh, I understand, was cut short by an industrial accident in which he lost a finger. He actually began his pathway to the education system uh, and then, uh, obviously, to this place, due to one of those uh, acts of fate that affect our lives seemingly in a terrible way, but in actual fact delivered Australia to a wonderful servant of this place. Uh, he was comfortably elected to the Senate from the fifth position on the ALP, ALP Senate team for the 1987 double dissolution election. Uh, and his views on the Senate changed over time. As uh, Senator Keneally noted, he said that the role of the Senate was increasingly important and was an increasingly effective and necessary check on the power of the executive, any executive. This perhaps can be contrasted with an earlier view that he had when he was a much more junior senator, where he said, and I quote, uh, about the Senate, and I quote, people speaking in empty changes, chambers people's running around to bells like Pavlovian dogs, the constant repetition of quorum calls or divisions. So his views did evolve over time, as I think all of our views evolve over time about this place. And in becoming president of this Senate, obviously he played a significant role in lifting uh, the work of this chamber and enshrining the committee system, which we all know and value so highly. Uh, he was defeated in the 1996 federal election, contesting the third position, uh, only the third incumbent Senate president to be defeated at the polls. Uh, he relinquished the role in August 1996 when the new parliament met. Uh, one of his perhaps lesser known but key contributions post his Senate career was saving 
the blue stone lanes around his house uh, where he lived in Brunswick, Victoria, which is obviously something that all Victorians now cherish. Uh, in 2011, he was appointed as a member of the Order of Australia for services to the Parliament of Australia, to the promotion of international bipartisan political debate, to the pharmacy profession and to the community. I cannot think of a higher honour. Michael Behan AM was a conscientious servant of the Senate and his chosen political party who made a varied and constructive contribution to public life in Australia, both before, during and after his time in this place. And I would ask senators to join me in a moment's silence to signify assent to the motion. Thanks, Senators. The motion is carried.